will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello and good afternoon to a sunny Scotland and a rainy Belgium. Uh, it's the Kuna Brussels Kuna preview. Uh, I am delighted to be joined again by Oliver Nason. Oliver, hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm happy to be back. Uh, since we last spoke, you have done Valenciana, you've done Oman. How, how was that for you? Um, Valenciana started really good. Uh, I didn't do like big, big results, but I was almost always in the top 15. And um, I felt good, I felt strong. I had even had sometimes after the race, like in, in Valencia, the Dania stage and the, the fourth Oman stage, after the races I had the feeling like oh, the puzzle would have been a little bit better. Maybe I could have won the stakes, so, so far so good for me. No crashes, no, no injuries, no health issues, so perfect. Perfect. Uh, I have noticed it is wet and rainy just now at home. Uh, in terms of preparation for the next couple of days, what, what do you do? How much training do you do on the bike? Do you take it easy? What, what is the next couple of days like? Well, um, this morning I did a, a super hard one with... Um, Greg and Anthony and Vanteke, we uh, did the full, the full wow, danger zone of Omlop, and uh, we, we rode really hard, we did four and a half hours, so uh, well, that, that should be enough for, for Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow is more like, um, well, the team wants to do another reconnaissance, but uh, for me, it's good. For me, it's, it would be good just to do two hours. But, yeah, I think they'll do a little trip with maybe um, in the car for one hour, I don't know. And the, day, and the day before the race is always super easy, one hour coffee ride if the weather allows it, which it won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of weather, the, the prediction doesn't look too bad for, for Sunday, for Kerner. It looks, might be dry, not a huge amount of wind. Uh, is that bad news for you? Else. Yesterday they said it was going to be really windy, today it's a little bit less windy. So I was out today, today the wind was, was uh, really, really strong and the direction was just perfect for, um, it was a southwest wind and in Kuhne you start in the west, you go east, you go down a little bit, you go back up and then you go back to Kuhne. So it's on the Bordeaux the entire day almost, like last year. The wind direction uh, compared to last year is almost the opposite, which actually doesn't change anything because you're on the side of the road on the same places and uh, yeah, it was really spectacular, spectacular race last year so I think it's going to be more or less the same again. And also for, uh, for echelons you need only like small 20k per hour winds and then it should be enough. I expect it to be more or less the same again. Uh, in terms of the, the crucial points of this race, where do you think the race really begins? For me, uh, <clears throat> I know the other years, I was always like, like elbowing my way to the front for uh, each little climb, which isn't actually necessary. Uh, for me, when we go over Trier, down to oh, the Quartermont, that's for me actually the only real key point where it would be in the top 10 because on the bottom it's, it's um, what we do, it's echelons for sure, always. And uh, at Quartermont itself is the hardest one, where uh, there are going to be these splits in the, in the bridge for sure. So for me, there's only one real technical point of it. The, the Quarmont, easily my favourite climb in all of cycling. Uh, it's got two very different halves. The, the opening section is uphill and very, very difficult. And then once you get into the village, it kind of flattens off and it's very level. Uh, talk, me through, talk me through the... What's it like? Um, for me, it's always like this on the bottom. I'm always a little bit too far before, at least. Then I move up a little bit on the steep section. And um, when it flattens out a little bit, I'm always looking for guys just to follow the guy in front of me and uh, always hoping to be more or less in the front of the bridge in the end and just hope to be placed before the place in the bridge. And it's uh, more or less how I try to do it. It's funny because, like, I've watched Sagan. A number of years, he, he he seems to struggle on the steep section, and then yeah. he is unbelievable on the flat section. Un I mean, he, he seems to always lose ground to riders like Terpstra, say, on the steep section. 
I think he takes a little bit easy on in the beginning because when you look at him also in the race, you never see him struggling. When he goes a little bit slower, it always looks like it's a gut. And then when he notices, oh shit, there's, there's a split in the bunch, he just powers his way to the front and uh, to another level. The, the Kwame in this race seems to be done different because in other races you see maybe two or three riders break away. In this race normally we see a large group, maybe 10, 20, sometimes more. Uh, when you reach the top and everybody looks round to see who's there and what team is there, is there any talk in the peloton? How, how do you decide, yeah, this, this is a good move? Um, well, for sure. If you go full in the quarter and you're with a 20 guy break like like it was last year, then you know it's a good move. It's always good to be in, in a group like this. Uh, it's always a lot better than it is and than to chase chase with a the simple difference is in other races where you do other quarter you have a number of really hard climbs before and only short parts where you can recover a little bit. Where uh, in Kudne, you have one climb, some big roads, uh, another climb, some big roads, so everything comes back. It's a little less hard than, than the, your, your average classic. So that's why there are more fresh guys and bigger groups breaking away. But for sure, if you can be in the front there, then uh, you're, you should be safe until the end of the, the, the hilly zone. Then you start the, the open, windy zone. But if you're already in the front, that's very good. So for me, that's my thing. It always seems to be very tactical. Uh, once you, you get through that hilly section, the chase never seems to organise itself until all the climbs are done. And then it's a case of, if you're not in the front group, you must chase. So I think maybe that's why in previous years we've seen the breakaway go or the breakaway come back. Last year, obviously, it didn't work. The group came back together and then it went crazy. For about 15 kilometres, you were involved in a few attacks yourself. How much is luck? How much do you need good luck to get away? Uh, oh, not so much. You just don't need bad luck. <laughs> if you can position yourself without crashing or puncture your shit, then um, for me that's the only thing I hope. And then I know I'm going to be in the front at the end of the hilly zone. And when it's open and windy, I'm sure I stay in the front. So for me that's nice. But like, for example, last year, we were in this 20-guy group after, um, after the actual ones. And uh, for me, it was sure to go to the finish like this. Steven broke away. He did a super effort. He won. But for me, what, what was happening behind me was something way, way, way back. They were two, three minutes behind at some point. And then with one K to go, everyone was back. I was, for me, I, I was thinking until well, one K to the finish, I was thinking for sure I did top five because I just didn't even think about the bunch going back. And then they're back, and it's 120 guys. It's just mind blowing. Uh, we've done some stars for today, as per usual. Uh, you have gone one star with all French riders. You have Demar, Bouhani and Cocard. Uh, all three, I would imagine, for a, a sprint finish. Uh, you obviously did Valenciana, Bouhani and Cocard were both there. Uh, were they looking good? Yeah, not super good. Like Bouhani wasn't so good in the climbs as, as the other years. But... Um but he was twice, he, twice he just did not win, really, really close. Then, um, well, I don't expect him to be on super good form in Valencia yet, for the first race. But for Kuhner, like the other years, he's always in, in top five. So, for me, he's one of the the guys who can win. But it has to be a sprint. But then again, there are maybe stronger and faster guys at the finish. So, that's why I only gave Buhani one star. Kukar and, and Demar, a little bit different, because those are two riders who are uh, uh, strong and like nifty on the bike enough to be already in the front, who might not even have to chase to be in the front. And if they're the only really fast guys, for me, they have quite a nice chance to, to, to win in a 20 guy, 30 guy sprint. I've gone for, I've also, uh, I've also got Demar, uh, who started the season well, he's taken some wins. He actually, I think he was sixth in the time trial in Algarve, which yeah. was. Yeah, big result. So he obviously has great form. I put Edward Toons in there as one star. Uh, just yeah, depends on. I was thinking Toons or Sturman. With Sturman having won it last year, I think Eddie is going to have to work for Gasper. That's he, the idea behind it. I would have put him in also, but 
if your teammate won the year before, I think you're going to have to go through. And it might depend what happens uh, in Umlup on Saturday as well. Uh, I've gone, I put Grona Vegan in at one star, which is a risk because he's very strong and, uh, and he, he will be there and he should be able to climb the Claremont with, say, top 30 guys. Uh, but I've only put him in at one star. I, I'm now looking at your list and thinking, mm. so two stars you have, training partner, Van Avermaet, Defending champion, Jesper Stuyven, and Dylan Groenewegen. How, obviously you ride a lot with Greg. How is he just now? Well, um, he's good. He's not like, like last year because uh, he got set back a little bit with a broken, a broken ankle. But um, for sure he's good enough to, to compete in any classic race. And I know normally the team didn't want him to do Kuhne, but he's going to do it because he really wants to do it. And for me, shows a lot of motivation and um, when it's hard he's one of the best and one of the strongest so for the scenario where a strong group, group goes to the finish he's one of my guys where I also put Steven in it's also the group where I put myself in but in the sprints with these guys they're a little bit stronger to in the sprint so that's why I gave them two stars for, uh, for this scenario and Grunewagen for me is um, one of the five fastest sprinters in, in the world and um, so far in, if you look at Dubai and everything and, and all the races he's done in was it Algarve or was it also I don't remember yeah Algarve yeah. He, also, yeah he was like all the time second or third <coughs> and you know he's just in super good shape and uh, for me normally Kuhn is always a sprinter with a pretty big group and for sure he's going to be there for sure he's going to throw himself in there and, and get a big result yeah, I would agree. He's, his form in Algarve was very strong. Uh, I know he's put in some big uh, numbers over the winter as well, so he is a definite danger. Two stars I've gone with some breakaway riders. So I've, I picked Luke Rowe of Team Sky, uh, who's won a stage in the Sun Tour. He spent a, a number of weeks, months almost, in Australia, uh, training hard, working hard. Team Sky arrived with a strong uh, squad. They've got Van Poppel, uh, Wisniewski, Stannard, Rowe, so I, he was involved last season, uh, he was looking really strong last year, I think he'll probably be a bit stronger uh, this year. Uh, controversially, I have Bonin only at two stars. Uh, his crashing, oh man, I'm not sure, I don't think it was too bad, but uh, I'm still, there is a, you, was it just scrapes? Yeah, it was barely anything, barely scrapes. And afterwards, I talked to him. He said, uh, "Well, it's nothing. It's just like scratches on the bike, but uh, the body's untouched." <laughs> so I should have talked to you before this. And uh, I've got, I've gone for Buhani. Uh, I've looked at his team, and now he will lose time on the Claremont, no doubt. He he is nowhere near the level of the top twenty or thirty riders. So he will need his team to work. He will need other teams to work to bring it back. Uh, he'll probably hope that. Christoph or somebody like that misses the split too so they can share it but his riders who are there at the end look very very strong so he should have riders like uh, Christoph Laporte, Dimitri Clays, uh, he's got a few others who will be there at the very end, Van Genecton is another one uh, so I just think Buhani if we do get a sprint will be put into the best position possible uh, he has finished second from the, the bunch sprint, I think, two years running. Uh, so I think he's just he's just about to, to, to kind of could win this race and he looks dangerous to me. I agree he's not, he wasn't in super shape in Valenciana. He was a bit better in Algarve, so he should be ready to compete in this race. Uh, three stars, Bonin, Christoph and Sagan, you have. Talk me through these picks. But Sagan, it's the obvious, you can never go past Sagan. And uh, no need to explain, I think he's one of the fastest and one of the strongest. So, small groups close to the finish, probably he's in. I mean, almost certainly he's in. And if a big bunch goes to the finish, yeah, he's one of the fastest. So, he still has his chance there. Christoph, um, when Oman, he won, he won three stages. But one stage was really, really impressive where um, he got dropped on the climb. But his whole team stayed with him. And uh, 
was like 5k after the, the, the top of the climb was finished. And this entire team and him, we, they were so good together, they, they got back the group where I was in. And um, he won really impressively, he won the sprint. It looked super easy for him. So for me, with the climbs being a little bit further apart for him, this is a big advantage. And um, I think his team is strong enough to, to bring him to the finish in a super good position. So yeah, there's Christoph and Boren being the last year, having won it like four times or something. I have got Sagan, I have Christoph. Uh, like you say, Sagan is just one of those riders. He's, he's so strong. He can win it from a small break, he can win solo, he can win from a sprint. So he can do everything. Christoph, I agree that the stage he won in a man, that was impressive. Uh, last season he was long dropped on that climb. Uh, so this season he must. Yeah, he must, exactly. must have better legs this year, I think. Uh, he won a stages in Besages. So, say again, Oliver? He looks, he looks leaner than last year also. Ah. Skinny. Uh, last year, I remember, he, he wasn't particularly strong here on the, the Quarmont, I think it was, uh, and also seemed to struggle in some of the other climbs. Uh, yeah. Still won the bunch sprint uh, for second, but he, if he's looking stronger, then... As you say, his team are very strong as well. If everybody stayed beside him in Oman, they have one focus, they have one goal, which is Christoph. And I've put Van Averma in at three stars. Uh, I have him in the same bracket of rider as Sagan. Uh, whatever Sagan can do, I think Greg can do as well. So he won't win a bunch sprint, but uh, I think he's got to be in there just, just in case. Uh, so if you had to select a winner of the race, who would it be? Be Christoph. Oh. Right, you've got Christoph, so that means I'll go Sagan. Uh, and for yourself, I suppose make sure you're at the front of the race for the Quarmont and then see what happens. Um, I hope to do a little bit the same like last year. Uh, we were we broke away with 20 guys after the Quarmont, uh, everything came back. The whole bridge went to the side of the road and put the side of the I was again in a group of 20 guys. I was really, really awake that day. And um, we were with five guys. Seven was, was gone, but we, we were a five guy, a five group, five guy group um, counter attack. And uh, we just got caught one K to I hope to do more or less the same race. And um, the thing is, for me, I don't see a lot of scenarios where, uh, where I can win it. With being, I'm pretty fast in a sprint, but uh, most of the guys, my. My uh, profile are a little bit faster, like the Gregs, the Sardans, the Stevens, Tunes, these guys. So I hope to do a big result, but I think it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be more logical to do a nice result the day before. And You've mentioned Doom Loop, so uh, I'll put you on the spot. Who who do you think wins on Saturday? Um, oh. Now I'm making you think. It's going to be again like last year, Greg or Sardan. And, um, yeah. Certainly, I know most cycling fans are really looking forward to, to this weekend, getting started. Uh, yeah. Is it the same for the riders? Does it is there a sense of excitement for these races? Yeah, for me, for sure. I mean, and in Valencia, I was happy to start racing there, but in the races, I mean, for the sprints, I never took any risks. It was always like, oh, it's only Valencia, I don't, just don't do anything stupid. We don't crash. It was the same. Uh, it was more about the, the feeling in the legs, but now it's like, uh, for me, Saturday, I'm going to throw myself in every corner, like it's my thing, and I think I look forward to it. And what's next after what's this weekend? Paninis. Paninis, nice. Very nice. Right, okay, well, best of luck this weekend. I hope it goes well for you. Thanks again for taking time out to do the preview. Uh, Good luck. Thanks. See you, man.